face-to-face -face impact with it is, this is epic. We caught a wave face-to-face. -face. They're not kissing, are they? Oh, she did that on purpose. Doesn't matter how it looks, as long as everyone comes in alive. Boys, I just got a vibe from going under it. It's right on the shore. He's three metres from the shore and he's completely, shore. completely drowning. Barely a few steps from shore, a tourist is being swept out to sea. Fully going under again. There's a kid in a fluoro wetty holding him up. The young surfer suddenly abandons the man. Hey, hey, hey! 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 Maxi finally reaches the man, who's worn out from fighting the rip. The man chooses an unconventional position. You know, I just wanted to have a bit of a relaxing ride in. You know, looking up at the stars. Oh, it's faced him. How good it is. This is epic. A very unconventional rescue. Very original. Uh, it was all time. It's OK. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. okay, thank you. Right there. The first two waves kind of pushed me into a bad position and I couldn't turn around with her to paddle back out and I couldn't go in, otherwise I'd get smoked. Watch out, move. A young woman is struggling in a deep gutter just north of the main tower. I'm in. Another swimmer and two surfers are keeping her afloat. on a roller coaster ride through the impact zone. Weaving his way over and under the dumping waves. Finally, he reaches the panicking swimmer. Come here, give me a hand. Give me a hand. You right? You all right? Did you? It was a hard rescue because she was kind of panicked. Fly that way. Fly down. Now, they just have to go back through the waves to make it to shore. These sets came out of nowhere and she was pretty scared. The waves are just guillotining on this impact zone. Stay there. The first two waves kind of pushed me into a bad position and I couldn't turn around with her to paddle back out and I couldn't go in, otherwise I'd get smoked. Not harder. Too and with a patient on the front of the board, if you nosedive in that, you know, one of you are going to end up with a broken neck. Will has only one option. Wait. I had no other choice but to grab her by the legs and hold onto her and bail the board. Hopefully the wave pushed us up onto the sandbank. My decision of letting go of the board is pretty frowned upon in lifeguarding. When it comes to my safety and the patient's safety, frown on me all you want. It was for the best interest of the both of us. I just had to hold on to her by her waist and <laughs> carry her like a footy. Look, I get the job done. That doesn't matter how it looks, as long as everyone comes in alive. A fresh face teams up with lifeguards for the day. Hopefully, I can do a little board paddle rescue. Go, 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 straight out. My name's Julie, um, I'm 23. I'm from Newcastle, a little town called Redhead. This is my first season of being a lifeguard. So I'm just looking to get a little bit more experience, uh, doing a couple of rescues, um, seeing what the boys do down here. I do want to prove to myself that I have what it takes to, to be working here. In the middle of the beach, Matt identifies a group of men being swept out in a rip. Get your shit on, get your shit on. Go, 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 straight out. Boom, it was on and I was a little bit nervous. I kicked into gear, I grabbed the board and I paddled out as quick as I could. I was involved in the rescue. She was actually able to get there first, and then I was able to back her up. I got to them, and I drove my board literally into the middle of their group, and they were just panicking, and they just all grabbed onto my board. For the second time today, a group of fully grown men scramble to stay afloat. In their desperation, the board tips. Fortunately, Julie gets the group back onto the sandbank. She had a bit of an unorthodox style at times, but yeah, she did a great job. In her first ever rescue, Julie manages five in one go. It felt empowering just to be able to paddle over to somebody that's struggling and be there when they need your help. It makes me want to just do as many rescues as I can. Thank you so much. Thank you. 
We caught a wave face to face. I just couldn't be bothered turning him around. So I was just asking him like what he had for lunch, how was your day, where are you going now, want to go for a coffee. Glick and Jethro spot a swimmer in trouble. I'll go for a paddle. Yeah, go, go, go. Quick scar for someone. Initially, I went out for one person who was just outside of the flags. And I didn't even see these other three people, but they just crept in the corner of my eye. There's a few slashes out there. They were going under, they were drowning. All three men are desperate to get on the rescue board. Glick's already in the water with three patients and then all of a sudden I spot another guy who's in just as much trouble nearby. Oh, it's another one. Down too. This guy had absolutely no swimming ability. Zero to none. But yet a fifth man is in trouble. He helped the others stay afloat but is now struggling himself. Yeah, can you go in? Yeah, I'm going to go on puppy board. Yeah, go, whatever you got, go. Panicking makes the situation more dangerous. Jethro tries to calm them. Relax. But as fear takes over, logic goes out the window. It's hard enough managing one panic patient. But three patients, it's very challenging. So you want to run down? Yeah. As soon as they, they start panicking, they just, sleep. they just kind of sink. Singlets is a full weapon. He's already heading in the water now. You know that you're always going to be backed up, up in this job, no matter what. Backup is closer than Glick realises as a volunteer lifesaver joins the rescue. The situation is finally in hand. Oh, okay, go, go, come. Then Glick decides on an unconventional rescue technique. We caught a wave face to face. I just couldn't be bothered turning him around. So I was just asking him like, what he had for lunch, how was your day? Where are you going now? Want to go for a coffee? I got very up close and personal with him. All right, no more swimming here, OK? No more. I don't know how I'm going there. But they rescued him. Just, just they rescue me. I'm sure it's a crowd pleaser. I don't think it's love. They're not kissing, are they? Chief lifeguard Hoppo and his long-serving mate Corey have seen it all before. There's a bloke in the girl. It's the furthest out in right in front of us. Can't champ, you can do it. They've spotted swimmers caught in a rip. I love seeing the great man go in. He doesn't get wet very often these days. His, his instincts kick straight in. He couldn't help himself. In he goes. Normally, people face the shore when they come in on rescue boards. But Irish tourist Sarah isn't keen on having her rear end in Hoppo's face. No, you won't find that rescue in the textbook, but nonetheless, it looks effective, doesn't it? I'm sure it's a crowd pleaser. I don't think it's love. They're not kissing, are they? Oh, look, she's thanking him, shaking hands and everything. Oh, she did that on purpose. <laughs> my life. He saved my life. But I would have been dead. I did not realise how far I was. I, was. I did not realise. She's um, learnt some perks of the job. You've <laughs> seen them arms. She didn't want to get on. A lot of girls don't like getting on with the guys because when they're on the front, you pretty much your face is on their backside, so it makes it a lot, a lot harder to paddle, but we got her in in the end. But it's more a comical sort of thing than, than a standard rescue. So we pinned its backpackers, had one quick look and saw the two and noticed they were struggling and... Go, Sam! You know, you know the rips back the front down here, so you just go. As I put up to this bloke, he's got these big Clark Kent glasses on. It's not very often you rescue people with glasses. I just grabbed them off him and put, it, put them on and I'm paddling him in and 
have a bit of a laugh with him. Turns out he wasn't meant to be going swimming. He was standing on the sand bank and ended up getting pulled off. I'm back on the beach, but the fun is far from over. As soon as that uh, wave hit us and flipped us, the girl was sweet, and then the guy, I've got to admit, I didn't have to say anything. He was straight on the back of that board so quick. All I had to do was flip the legs under. He just did everything. H has adopted this new technique. He does the reverse Babinski, where he decides to rescue someone in the complete unfashionable way. We get a good heckle out of it. I think Hage's technique's uh, up there for one of the best I've seen. You know, I've seen him do a couple of rescues like that. The old sea dog masters the uh, reverse Babinski, that's what we call it. Reverse Babinski, yeah. yeah. Growing up way out near the bush means Blake never learned to surf, let alone use a rescue board. Now it's a crucial part of his training. He was struggling with it, the big board, you know, he's only a skinny little fellow, so he was struggling with it in the wind, so I taught him to leave it on the ground and that's one thing he's kind of picked up and he looked terrible when he was carrying it. It's almost embarrassing but you know <laughs> these are the kind of things that he's going to have to get used to when he's down here. And... Handling the heavy boards is awkward enough on land. Blake faces the challenge of wrangling them in the surf. Next one Mikey. <laughs> Regulation procedure is to catch a wave on the way in, not on the way out. Still part of the training, he'll get it. It's just all about the position of the board, so the littlest waves can knock you off if you're in the wrong spot. So, yeah, they're not too big. The bigger waves make it hard to catch, but and hard to get over, but they don't have much swell lately, so I haven't got much practice. 